Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is my video about coloring. <laughs> um, uh, but before we start, uh, Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar. That's gonna be we're gonna be making the print file for that right after we finish the print file for Expendables Go to Hell, which is being assembled right now. It's amazing how fast things move <laughs> when number one. You pay someone more to expedite it. <laughs> and number two, it's put into the hands of someone who is not emotionally attached or involved to the project to the extent that I am. I just, this, this has been done. <laughs> I just choked under the pressure of assembling the print file. Um, but it's very simple things. They're like, hey, who's the credits for this side quest? Who's the credits for this? How are we going to do the, the the copyright information? So it's, it's like very, I, I basically told the guy, just... Act like you're my boss and just tell me to do things and ask me questions and that's working really well. Um, so uh, somebody sent me this link and uh, they thought it would be a fun video and I hope it is. <laughs> I had fun preparing it. Um, so uh, this person, again, don't contact anyone for any reason. Uh, they uh, Okay, so what I noticed is pe you know, people always send me little reports from Twitter. And besides a few people who are as miserable as ever, maybe more so, SJWs are chilling out. You remember the video I did a couple days ago where they're having a fun game of like showing like actors and actresses and saying who they would portray in, you know, the comic book industry? Well, now they're just like, hey, let's all color this picture of Colossus and see how it goes. I was like, I'm not used to that. Probably they aren't either. I'm actually foreseeing a trend where all of a sudden comics tries to get fun uh, while uh, ignoring the, uh, you know, basically the acid attacks, the symbolic acid attacks they've been doing on the, uh, the fans, the customers for the last four years. So we'll see how that plays out. Um, but uh, this person just said, anybody want to color this Arthur Adams Colossus with me? I'm going to do it when I have time. Here's the flats if you'd like to have a go. So we get to see this. Uh, okay, so then he gives the flats and you can go. I, I tried it. I'm just terrible. <laughs> I I used the PSD and then I was doing it over there in, in Manga Studio and it was just ass. <laughs> I just deleted it. I'm not very good at this type of stuff. But these people. Okay, so before I start, people are getting um, pandemic and do as you're told all over the world. I'm surprised nobody's gotten Iron Sights 2 Psycho second printing because it went out like a week and a half ago. I'm just, I remember last December fulfillment got really slow the whole month of December and then you add in COVID. So maybe some people will get it today and tomorrow. Uh, but um, I was, t I was having a talk with the, uh, the printers, you know, because like I said, every damaged book, it's, it's like a tear or a crumple on my heart, on my soul, like it hurts. And, you know, I would send them pictures of damaged books and they would investigate. They're like, well, we're not really finding widespread. It's kind of like with the voter, you know, the, the voter fraud. And then they investigate, they're like, we're not really finding it. You know, we're seeing some irregularities, but those are, you know, one-offs essentially. Um, so I got frustrated and I go, and they, I go, well, what am I supposed to do with your answer? You know what I mean? And they said, well, we can reimburse you for the damaged copies. I go, well, you know, it's, that's not what it's about. I've heard that for every one customer who complains, another 10 don't complain. They just never buy your stuff again. And that terrifies me. But then I started thinking, it's pretty easy to get information to me. So it's quite possible that the non-reported damaged copies are a lot lower than, you know, 10 for every one I get a report. So I am going to request now and forevermore that everyone who has a damaged copy send me an email, diversitycomics at gmail.com because then I can get, I mean, it's a numbers game at some point. If you print off 3,000 and 30 are damaged, obviously you don't want 30 damaged, but within you know the realm of mass production that's acceptable then you just say okay so this percentage is going to be damaged so i can count on doing refunds for this percentage i don't know i mean i got like 14 reports of damaged books but 
I don't know if it's actually 140, or I guess actually it would be 140 plus words, 154. So please, if your book is damaged in any, I mean, they're never going to be perfect. You know what I mean? There's always going to be like slight, tiny irregularities. If it's damaged in a way that you noticed, not that you had to look for, send me an email, please. Okay, so anyway, uh, in this fun project, they start with a line work from Arthur Adams. This is uh, fairly old. It's from 2003. Um, Arthur Adams, he, his style has, I'm not going to say evolved, <laughs> because I think his late 80s, you know, very, very early 90s stuff is the best. And his later stuff, I, I, it's, I'm just, it's not happening for me. It just isn't. Even like his Wildstorm stuff, I was like, it's, it's different. I don't like it. This to me looks like something from like 1990, but it says, you know, 2003. Uh, so we get this um, Colossus on a battlefield and then this kind of noodly, I don't know, smoke in the background. Now, nobody was given any instructions, you know, of like, oh, this is the point in the story or this is a cover for No, it's just like this is an illustration. And so you get to see people kind of struggle with what to do with that noodly stuff in the background. So what um, the person who started this fun contest did is they did the flats. And the flats are, if you're looking at the screen, pretty self-explanatory what flats are. That's the first start. A lot of colorists actually farm out flats. Um, you know, you'll get an email. They're like, oh, I'm going to get it back from the flatter. To me, this looks like the most fun part. I mean, it's very simple, but it's very much just coloring. I mean, you can do selections with the magic wand, but at some point you just got to zoom in and just, you know, manually uh, adjust them. So then we get to see people's takes on them. So uh, one person did a, a couple of these collages and I, I love this stuff. This just looks so cool. That's fine that it's not totally lined up. It's just slightly offset. I'm not noticing that at all. Anyway, so th these are the... Um, uh the individual ones i can't guarantee i didn't repeat any um the reason i'm not going to everyone's tweets is you know tw twitter is very wonky with stuff like that you can't just kind of like chronologically go through it you know it splits and it diverges constantly so this is stop i hate stop these pop-ups on everything it's gonna unplug that um so this one is uh, uh some nice um modern style coloring uh with the hammer and sickle in the background it looks like they just destroyed that noodly little crosshatch and they go okay that's annoying i don't know what to do with that so i'm going to do a hammer and sickle in the background does it fit that much you know with the modern okay it's fine i would say one of the things is that i see a lot of these overpowering the line work now the line work is you know it's thin but it's i can read it quite well and this and a lot of them, the line work gets, you know, kind of, it's not primary, which is to me like right here. You see, do you see how that one, the line work like really. And again, this person also looked at that noodly background. They go, what is this bunch of bees or something like that? So they found some image of a sentinel or perhaps they did it themselves. And they put that in the background kind of out of focus. There are aspects of this that don't quite work. It doesn't really incorporate the noodly cloud swarm, but uh, overall, uh, I really uh, like this one. This one is just is just too dark. Um, there's this thing uh, with colorists, like real, like serious colorists, where they will calibrate their um, monitors so it's like they, you know, they know the exact different gradations of colors, but they can also predict how it's going to look uh, on the printed page. If this was printed, it would just be nah. And also down here with like the like, oh, these two are the same color and this one. No, nah, this one's not working for me. This one's it's it's OK. Uh, it's not great. I like the lightning bolt, um, <laughs> but um, not the best. This one I like uh, there. You know, it's a uh, I'm seeing the line work quite well. The sparkles, eh, you know. There's kind of like these trends in digital coloring 
where I remember for a while, like a sky would be a picture of a sky, and it was, kind of, or the sand would be the texture would be they would take a picture of sand, and then that stuff kind of goes away. The sparkles, which I don't think are supposed to be stars, but I think it's supposed to be like coming off of his metallic skin. Eh, I'd probably take that out. This one's uh, acceptable. Um, this one is, you know, going more kind of like an art school project, and I don't think it works. I don't know quite how to describe this, what this is. This looks like some sort of wall treatment I would see on Property Brothers or something like that. But then you got more standard, almost like cell shaded, and then this is kind of just regular coloring, and I don't think it works. Um, this one would, if they would have taken the, uh, you can do this thing called multiply, and especially on uh, black and white line work, it basically just makes all the lines look a little thicker and darker, and I think for the, the layer of the line work, they could have done that. It, it, to me, the, uh, the line work is getting a little gauzy here. This one I actually like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. Um, it's very kind of 80s anime, and I just thought it was fun. This one is just, again, I mean, if you're doing a black light poster or glow in the dark, I guess it's fine, but again, it's just too dark. And then it, it's making that, I mean, they reversed it instead of, you know, now the, the sky is black and then the cloud of bees, <laughs> the swarm, whatever. So this person basically just got rid of it. They they made it almost completely translucent. I uh, I like the little background they went in there, and uh, there's some nice sculpting on here. But again, it's the line work is just kind of getting almost destroyed. This one is is good. Um, I think it works quite well. Uh, it's not the best. And again, this right here looks like a picture of something, and that's real like. 90s early 2000s um this one's good again i wish the line work was uh darker but i like it i really like this you know um the, the sun just going over his shoulder i like this one yeah nice sculpting this kind of reminds me about how people used to color uh rob liefeld stuff back in the 90s now this <laughs> was just because my ocd I, I wanted to have 25, uh, you know, different versions, and then I somehow skipped 15, so I went back to find another one. Now, this is what happens, what does that guy say, happy accidents? A lot of times when you're doing digital work, you will hit the wrong button, or you will hit the right button twice, and you'll be like, oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. And you go to Control z undo, and then you go, huh. There are aspects of this that are cool. I gotta remember how I did this by accident. Now this doesn't work because it just it's weird. But the thing that you learned by your happy accident could be used uh, in another project. Uh, this one's very good. Again, I just think the line work needs this. I don't know what why he's shading it like that because I'm not really. Nah. Now the whole thing is that colors influence each other but nah, that's not working that shoulder looks weird this to me looks very very like how people used to color rob liefeld i'm fine with the sparks again it's a little 90s early 2000s but this one works for me this one i love this one they're trying to go with the uh i don't know what you that old style of printing they would do for propaganda posters uh, where, um, you know, they had a limited color palette and usually printed on colored paper. Uh, I, I love this one. Uh, it, as an illustration, I... There are aspects of this I like, but then the color for the foreground is completely flat and it looks unfinished to me. This one I like quite a lot. When I saw this one, I said, this is the one that you use for the trading card. If this was like a, a trading card set like they did with the X-Men back in the, what, early 90s. Uh, this is the one I would pick. This one I like as being kind of, you know, artsy. I specifically like the sculpting on, I don't, I mean, it's not a shirt. Whatever you call, whatever this thing is called right here. 
um, uh, you know, it gives it a little bit of three dimensionality uh, to it. And I like this kind of explosion. Uh, that's uh, cool. This one is is fine. Again, this one and this one, I would kind of, I would probably try be trying to choose between these two if I was doing a uh, trading card set. Actually, this one might even win. The only problem with uh, this one is the coloring for the hero doesn't really match the environment. Like this one, he, it looks like he's, he's on a stage with a spotlight, whereas this one looks, everything is, is uh, cohesive. Yeah, this one's okay, but it's a little, these colors are kind of washed out and weak. This one I like, you know, they did the spotlights. Um, here's one thing I will say. The spotlights are a little too symmetrical. I know they're not centered exactly in the page, but what I'm saying is I would have the angles more varied between the two of them. But this one I like. Again, line work kind of getting washed out a little, but it's a good concept. I like it. Pretty good. Again, it's more in the trading card, like very clear image, especially when you shrink it. But this... He's blending into the background too much uh, on the shoulders and especially this side of the head. And that's the last one. So what would I say is my favorite one out of all of them? Probably that one. I'm going to see if... I mean, stylistically, I like this one, but this is... Diff it's definitely like a variant, you know what I mean? This to me is like the classic, like everything's kind of working. And they, <laughs> they kind of figured out what to do with that weird swarm. I'm going to see if there's one I like better. That one ain't bad, really. Did I skip over this one? No, I said it was Rob Liefeld. That one isn't bad. This one is also like really low res for some reason. Let's see, is there one I like more? That one ain't bad either. I don't know. I think this one. Okay, so. I'm getting a nice incorporation of the line work and the colors, and I like the addition to the background. So this is number two. I'm going to go back and look at the other one. Oh, it's freezing. It's the other one I liked a lot. This one, 20. I, I don't like this. Uh, both of the. Uh, Two of the people, they made it really dark on the shoulder and that side of the face. So even though I was saying I like that one, I think I am going to go back and say... It's freezing when I'm trying to go back. Yeah, I'd say this one was uh, my favorite. Now again, it does get a little dark here, but do you see what they, they put this there? To give it a little bit of a, a, a rim. Let's see if that is in the... Well, that is in the artwork but they emphasize it a little bit with the color. So a very, very fun project. Again, you can um, try it out yourself if you want to. He's got the Dropbox where you can... So uh, for people who don't know, uh, CMYK, that's the colors that are to be printed. It's cyan, magenta, yellow, and K is for black. RGB is what you are gonna typically see on your uh, screen. That's for a screen. This is one is for print. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone given to the Patreon and the Indiegogo. Your funny and original content and unoriginal lawsuit. Links are in the description. Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar. Expendables Go to Hell. Both of these are looking to be fulfilled this month in December. Trying to get Expendables Go to Hell out to most people uh, by Christmas. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.